Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Johnny. Today, I'm going to break down, um, you know, I guess real time uh, color grading and editing on uh, the Mac Mini M1 as well as um, a Canon EOS R6 um, 4K footage that was recorded in 10 bit. Um, a couple things to note during this video. All of the footage has been captured directly to the desktop, so I'm not I'm not operating off of an external hard drive. Um, I know a lot of people have been using um, external SSD drives, which has pretty good optimal performance, but um, I personally am going to work directly off of the desktop. Um, I will also keep up the activity monitor. Um, you know, granted, when I have Adobe open, um, the activity monitor is going to be down. Um, and minimized, but I'll periodically um, let you guys check out the pressure that we're giving to the actual CPU itself. Um, so if you're interested in this kind of stuff, I'd really appreciate it if you guys just go ahead and hit that like button. Um, you know, it helps me out a lot and hope you guys enjoy. So um, real quick, I'm just going to, uh, how I'm doing this is I'm recording uh, with QuickTime on the actual um, Mac itself. And uh, in order to do this, obviously that's going to be another app running as well as Adobe Premiere. Um, you know, and so thankfully my audio is being recorded externally. So that is not another added thing onto the computer. But um, as you can see, I'm just going to drag and drop. You know, like I said earlier, all of these uh, footage clips are recorded with the EOS R6. They were recorded at either um, 4K 30 frames per second or 4K 24 frames per second, all using 10-bit color science. So um, reason I note that is because 10-bit is a lot heavier than 8-bit, um, and that's why I'm choosing to specify that it was 10-bit. And so um, here, uh, this is real-time, real real-time playback. Uh, looks like I'm just gonna go ahead and mute so that you guys don't hear the audio from my computer uh, let's go let's try to find a good clip so here is a clip of my pup and I'm just gonna go ahead and click play no issues with playback so far just a, like a very very I mean it, it kind of looks like a, I, I maybe dropped the frame like just faintly um, but it's not too bad so we'll just go ahead and drag this into our sequence. Let's see. Um, and then we can pull up the, uh, well, it looks like I don't have Lumetri scopes open, but uh, there we go. So real quick, I'm just going to go over here into um, color wheels. We'll drop the shadows down just a faintly, bring up the highlights a lot. Um, bring up the midtones a little bit all right and then we're going to go to basic corrections we're going to add some looks like a little bit of uh, warmness we'll just go ahead and click auto just to see what it looks like um, and I don't like that at all so I'm just going to pull back the exposure a little bit bring up maybe mess around with that let's just apply that to zero because I don't like that and so all of this was also filmed uh, just a little bit of back background uh, we're going to go on to another clip here shot with the r6 this is in the city it looks like <laughs> we'll go pull up the lemotri scopes and activity monitor it looks like we had a little bit of a spike um you know maybe when we brought in the footage and we were using playback um, but for the most part it's doing pretty well the only time i've ever seen this actually turn yellow or orange um, it's because I had Adobe Lightroom open um, you know I've read in some wiki forums that um, people have had issues with uh, Adobe Lightroom for some reason on the Mac mini I don't know why um, but I personally have also found to have issues while exporting or even uh, using Lightroom in general um, Adobe Lightroom seems to uh, really be intensive on the CPU but for the most part, um, with Adobe Premiere, I have had zero issues, even using Rosetta. It's, you know, I'm not taking advantage of the M1 processor. I mean, I'm, of course I am, but we're still using Adobe uh, Rosetta version. It's not integrated with Mac Mini yet. Um, you know, whereas Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve all use 
the Mac Mini M1 chip. So we'll just go ahead and it looks like our lumetri scope's pretty good. Uh, we'll just pull up the color wheel and again. We'll bring up the shadows just a little bit. You know, while, while color, color grading, you can see here on the lumetri scopes, I like to keep uh, all of my data, you know, all of the color within the 10 and 90. Um, you know, that just helps me. Uh, I feel like with, you know, with that data, it just seems to do a really good job with all of the colors that I tend to tweak. Um, so as you can tell, I mean, it already looks really, really clean. Um, you know, and that's a 1.8 playback. We'll just drop it down to 1.4 to see what we got. Activity monitor still looking pretty good. We're only using 6.2 gigabytes of the pressure. So we'll go to basic corrections, add a little bit of warm. We'll just drop the white balance sector on here to see what it, yeah, that's not bad. We'll just pull that back a little bit. Seems to me like we'll add a little bit of saturation just because we shot in C log again. And so, yeah, looks like a really good image that's usable. Um, you know, but we have some red, blue, and green right here that is way past our highlights. So we're going to go back to the color wheel. We're going to drop that highlight down a little bit. Um, sweet. And let's just pull up some more, um, a different scene maybe. We'll, uh, this is my beautiful fiance. Yeah, we're gonna pull this into our sequence. And then, again, we're just gonna go ahead and play this back and see what it looks like. Wow, see, look at that, that was 4K, shot at 30 frames per second. Has no issues playing back um, in Adobe Premiere. So we're just gonna actually go ahead and pull this into our sequence. And color grade again. We're gonna pull up these elementary scopes. This is really repetitive, but it's pretty normal um, in my process of editing. So it looks like we're gonna need to uh, bring up the highlights a lot here. Just right above clipping. And then we'll pull down the shadows again. Just barely. We'll bring up the midtones just so we can have a little bit more of that uh, shadow. We're gonna go back to basic corrections. We'll actually make it a little bit softer. I'm gonna add some saturation. A little bit of contrast, pull down the highlights, bring up the shadows, bring down the whites, blacks, we'll just keep those pretty pretty low just to get that dramatic effect. Awesome. Yeah, that's a pretty good image. We'll just go ahead and play this back on our feed while activity monitors open. So as you can tell, uh, it's a little bit weird. Uh, you know, uh, it looks like a lot of frames dropped, but that's just because Adobe wasn't open. We had actually a t activity monitor open. Uh, and so, you know, it looks like uh, we're still really low in terms of memory being used on the CPU. Uh, so we're just gonna go play that back again. Let's just throw this in full resolution and see if it has any problem, you know, playing this back at full resolution. Yeah, so check that out. It's like, it, it's playing back, no problem. Absolute full resolution on Adobe Premiere Timeline. Uh, shot at 10-bit color science, 4K, 30 frames per second. Really, really stinking good. Again, we're just going to go ahead and pull in another clip. I know that this, a lot of this might be repetitive, but uh, a lot of you guys are curious. Um, maybe whether it's 10-bit color science edited on the Mac Mini Adobe Premiere or even just the Mac Mini being edited in general. Uh, so I just wanted to give you guys a lot of options to see real time. So again, I'm going to just play this back for you guys to watch up the activity monitor see this time it has no issue with playback it, it's not dropping any frames at all memory being used is still less than 10 um, and it's a pretty good clip we'll uh, drop that into our premiere timeline and go from here 
We're gonna pull up those elementary scopes again. We're gonna bring up our color wheel. We're going to, wow, there's a lot of data down in our shadows here. So we're gonna bring up our highlights just to barely, it looks like right here on the horizon is where all of our highlight data is, is at. to bring up our midtones as well, drop our shadows a lot. There we go. That's a pretty sharp image. Going to add some saturation. Bring it a little bit warm. And something that I haven't done as I normally do with most of my footage, I like to add a little bit of sharpness. I'm just going to put it on five. Just because in C-Log, uh, we typically, at least I typically, bring my sharpness all the way down in camera so that I can add sharpness in post. And it helps a little bit more with some digital sharpening. Um, and as you can tell right there in my uh, foreground, it is really, really sharp right there. We're just gonna go ahead and play this for real time. So as you can see, it's actually having a little bit of an issue playing back real time. This is full resolution, and this is a lot, probably because I've added a lot more color grading to this clip. We'll just drop this down into 1 8 and we're just going to play that back again, see if we have any issue. So it looks like it's actually having a hard time, uh, you know, filtering through all of these color grades, uh, you know. In a grand scheme of things, this is very minor. Um, still, for less than $1,000, I don't think you can get this much horsepower in a system, you know. All right, guys, that pretty much sums up today's video, um, you know, editing uh, EOS R6 footage 10-bit on the Mac Mini M1. Um, let me know down in the comments below if you guys like this video. And if not, I'll see you next time. Thanks.